But I want to draw your attention to, I believe you have what I, I gave you there, um, from the world gas intelligence. And I'm only going to briefly talk about this. But it cited uh, 40 LNG receiving ter terminals. And this uh, gentleman, <clears throat> he, this is, this is a, a, a very good organization. They evaluated the 40 of these terminals that were supposed to be built according to 22 criteria. And I want to point out to you, one of the main ones is risk mitigation. When this is in transit, even through Newport, all the way up to the site in Fall River, you have a real risk. Those 22 criteria out of these 40 on the next page you will find where Hess was rated. Now you have four terminals that are going to be built. 22 criteria talking about finance, risk, uh, mitigation, location. They were ranked last 40th out of 40. The Irving one that Gordon uh, Carlton talked about, the Canaport one, was ranked second. And the reason for that is, number one, it's built on 1,800 acres. It's built away from housing. And they are right now, they've been up and running now since July of uh, 2009, and they're sending down 20%, about 20% of our supply. We got the one off Gloucester's about 20%. We have another one being built to probably give us 20%. I have no idea why they want to put this in. I have some ideas, maybe why they want to put this in the Fall River, number one, the pipelines are there, number two, maybe since the Everett facility is getting old, it's getting up in age, that they want to put this in Fall River. When you look at, we know it's in mass waters, but it is going to uh, be a detriment to Mount Hope Bay. This is the EIS study that was done by FERC, who regulates these facilities. And right in here, which has been pointed out to them, they talk about the cryogenic pipeline that they want to run 4.2 miles into the facility. And, and here's, here's what they say. These are the people that give the permit. It says, such facilities enable LNG ships to berth and trans transfer their LNG cargo to the cryogenic pipeline at docking facilities in offshore areas where natural, now listen, natural water depths exceed 40 feet. Where they want to put this platform, it's 16 feet, so they have to dredge Mount Hope Bay. These people are saying it. We're not saying it for those who are, who are against this project. Being 18 years in the oil industry, I just know this, this will be a detriment from Newport all the way up. I know it. I feel it. Development will be another thing, the economics that you're going to lose on this project. What they did say, although feasible, a number of technical factors related to transporting LNG in a pipeline, place limits on the practical maximum length of such a pipeline, they're talking about the cryogenic pipeline, to about three miles. They're saying approximately three miles. Now, it's never been done in the world before, 4.2. So it's experimental. They don't even know if it's going to work properly. But they go on to say, to talk about our ports. It, uh, where I've got it outlined, it says, furthermore, industrial ports in the New England region are largely situated along narrow waterfronts that are accessible only from narrow navigational channels. And that's what we have coming up from Newport, the 18 miles. Therefore, an offshore docking structure and a cryogenic pipeline would have to be located rel relatively close to a navigation channel, which it is, which could interfere with other port operators or marine traffic, which it will. And here's what they say, the final thing. Although considered, we did not identify, they said we did not identify 
a site where the use of this approach appear practical. They're saying that these are the guys that give the permit to Weaver's Cove. They're saying they never found a place in New England where this is practical. Because this, this is an offshore. This, this is a, a, a mile out from Brayton Point. And if we get a release, if we get a re the Sandia report shows, if we get a release of liquefied natural gas, the probability of a disaster, the models have been done. And it, you could get a release in transportation if something happens up from Newport up. So we, I feel, as elected official, I have a fiduciary responsibility for public safety. And this is also a public safety issue. You know, they will tell you that nothing is going to happen. I have been on units where things have happened. I know in 1999 I got a call from the Irvings and uh, from Irving Oil, some of the engineers I know up there, and a good friend of mine was killed on a unit. Things do happen because they had an explosion. The last report that you see is from CBC. They will tell you that nothing's going to happen, you're never going to have a release. Canna ports on 1,800 acres away from the populated areas. They had a problem, this is on the new technology now, in July 2009. They had this problem, this is reported in October the 10th, 2009, that they, the unit overpressured, and, think, and think, of, uh, think of a water tank with a safety valve on it. So they had to dump the gas out to the flare system. That's your safety valve where, where you burn off all the gas. The flare got so large and got so hot that the workers had to leave. It's not going to affect you in Rhode Island, but it will affect the people of Fall River within 1,000 feet of their homes. If we have an emergency, there's no evacuation plans even for the people in Newport on the transit route all the way up. We've been harping on this for a long time. It, and that ship cannot be protected. I was before Jamestown Council and talked about the first Coast Guard recommendation. It got turned down by Captain Nash. He didn't say from where they're sighting the offshore, that's not offshore, the, the platform now, Mount Hope Bay, he said from Prudence Island in, the navigation would be difficult, and that's why he turned it down. It's not about just the old Brighton Street Bridge in Fall River. We have a lot to think about, and you talked about the delegation. Well, on December the 30th, it took us about two months, two months for all of us to get together, we met, we did meet uh, with Jim McGovern, Ray Gallison was there, I was there, along with Patrick Lynch, along with Dave Sullivan, and the new mayor of Fall River. And we gave him something, legislation, that we would like to see put in in Washington. And I believe if this goes in, and there's other legislation to follow that, that two of my colleagues over here are, are trying to get through. This would stop this project. We don't need the supply. They'll tell you we do. We've got a glut right now. We do not need it, and I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Any questions from the witness? I thank you very much for, for your advocacy and for coming uh, to us. I guess from Massachusetts saying all that, Paul, but I still appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. And if you ever get arrested with Ray Gallison, I know some lawyers in the Fall River area, but don't call me. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, folks, I am going to ask um, to try and keep uh, the, the, the first speakers here were kind of invited, and I did give them a little bit of uh, extra length uh, due to um, the fact that I'd asked them to come here for one, um, and I consider myself a good host. But I am going to ask that folks re refrain from uh, or try to keep their comments to the five minutes limit.